Susan Horobin has popped round to Nightingale Farm to ask about Neil's sprained ankle. should be more comfortable now. Oh, thanks a lot. I can't reach to do the bandage properly, but that feels a lot better. Now, what else can I do for you? Oh, you've done enough. It was nice of you to drop in. I don't want to hold you up. Mm, it's the least I can do, seeing as how it's all my fault. <laughs> it's not your fault you got daft brothers, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> That's nothing to what I've been calling them. You wouldn't think anyone could be that stupid, would you? Not even them. Yeah, it was dangerous. They might have killed Pinky. I wasn't thinking about the pig. Poor thing can't have known what was happening to him. <laughs> he looked to me as if he was quite enjoying it. Had a distinct look of our dad on a Saturday night. Oh, I don't see how a pig can like being drunk. He's all right now, is he? No vomiting or anything? Oh, no, he's fine. It's you I'm worried about. Oh, nothing wrong with me. A couple of days rest won't cure. I can hobble about now. Don't reckon I'd be much use around the farm, though. Do you want me to go down to Brookfield and say you won't be in today? Oh, they shouldn't be expecting me. Mind you, I bet Mr Archer was hoping I'd manage to crawl down there somehow. Well, I'll walk down and tell him how bad you are. No, there's no need. No, I don't mind, honest. I just want to make things up to you. There's nothing to make up. I've told you. But it's all my fault. Look, th there is something you could do if you really wanted. It'd take a weight off me mind. Anything. Well, it's me hens. Oh, your hens. Ed is supposed to be keeping an eye on them. But, but you don't trust him. Mm. I don't blame you. No, it's not that, but uh, they'll really be pushed at Grange Farm with a harvest and everything. I know how it is. Things slip your mind. Mm. And Eddie isn't the most reliable person at the best of times. I'll have a look at them for you. Yeah, if you could just pop over. I'm sure they're all right, really, but Mike Tucker might have got nasty when Eddie turned up. Neil, and... I've told you, I don't mind. Mm. Now... Would you like a cup of coffee before I go? Or a piece of toast? Uh, or the radio one? Uh, no, thanks. I think I'll just have a bit of a nap. A bit of rest and I'll be as right as rain. Then you won't have to worry about me anymore. Now you sit quietly and drink this. What is it? Just a nice hot cup of tea with plenty of sugar. Good for shock. It isn't me that had the shock, it's Jack. You looked as though you'd seen a ghost when you turned up on the doorstep. I thought one of the children must be ill. Hmm, I felt as though I had. I couldn't think who Jack was talking about at first. It's a long time since the divorce. Nearly ten years. It might never have happened at all, the way he's reacting. And I went up there to shout at him. Oh, Mum, I feel so mean. I shouldn't worry about it. I don't suppose he even noticed. Well, I thought the best thing I could do was fetch you. We're such old friends. Of course. I'll go straight up. Once I've got you sorted out. I don't know why it affected me so much. It's not as if Valerie meant anything to me. Did he say any more? How she died or anything? No. Just that he'd had a letter from Hazel. Oh, yes, Hazel. There's another problem. It was just... Well, Jack's usually so lively and, and full of himself, and oh, suddenly he'd, he'd shrunk. Quite an old man, really, isn't he? I've never noticed before. She meant a lot to him. I think she was the only woman he ever loved. <laughs> if that doesn't sound too melodramatic. Oh, not if you could see the way he'd reacted. She was very attractive, of course, and she'd led a glamorous life. He thought he was lucky to get her. Of course, it was quite the other way round. Jack was worth 20 of her. And then she left him. And then she left him. I know you shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but... Oh, well. She is dead, and that's that. And Jack's shattered. That's what I mean, you see. That woman's still got power to hurt him. Even now. So, I'll probably be able to see the wine merchant on Friday afternoon. Really, Mr Woolley, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm sure if I explain, he'll understand. Oh, I'll feel easier in my mind when I've got everything sorted out. Now, about Jennifer's book. Jennifer's book? I never wanted to do a paperback, Caroline. Really? I wouldn't have done either if we hadn't found those unbound copies of the hardback edition at the back of the warehouse. 417 of them. Oh, I see. 
I can't think what made me behave like that. Come in. Oh, Peggy, I'm glad to see you. Morning, Caroline. Hello, Mrs. Archer. Jack, I came as soon as I heard. Well, that was nice of you. It was the least I could do. I'm so very sorry. Must have been such a shock. Yes. Yes, well, you know, Peggy, I am glad you've come. If there's anything I can do... You can give Jennifer a message for me. We were just talking about it. Oh, yes, uh, about her book. Her book? A display at Martha's. I think that's the answer. Of course. Whatever you think best. Poor Martha. When Joby died, I wasn't very sympathetic, you know. Oh, yes, you were. You sent a lovely wreath. Of course, I didn't really understand. Ah. Uh, I think I'll just... If you ladies will excuse me. Yes, of course. Oh, dear. Jennifer warned me, but it's heartbreaking. He's very efficient, very concerned about other people. Well, you saw. And then suddenly... It's the shock, of course. The funeral's on Wednesday in Brighton. He wants to travel down tomorrow. I see. Well, it may be best to get it over with. He was being so efficient about the arrangements. Knew which was the best hotel in Brighton and everything. And all the time he had this awful look in his eyes. He's bound to be upset, Caroline. You must expect that. <sighs> yes, I know, but I've never seen him upset before. I suppose I didn't think he was capable of feeling that deeply. Oh, I feel so mean. Well, there's no point in working yourself into a state about it. That's not going to help him. <laughs> no. No, you're, you're right, of course. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just needed a uh, breath of fresh air. <laughs> You've had a shock, Jack. You shouldn't be trying to do too much. Wouldn't you like to lie down? Oh, no, no. There's so much to get sorted out. Well, I'm sure I can take care of it. And now I'm here to give Caroline a hand. There was something you said about Martha. Something I said? Oh, flowers. What an idiot I am. you better wire a florist in Brighton, Caroline. Order a wreath. Oh, Y yes. Roses, I think. She loved roses. Roses. Um, red? Or would you like me to take care of it? Oh, you'll need the name of the cemetery. Uh, hang on. I'll fetch Hazel's letter. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Archer. I'm afraid I'm not really very good at coping with this sort of thing. Well, it's not something you want to get much practice at, is it? It was really nice of you to come and cook me dinner for me, Martha. I appreciate it. I really do. Oh, it wasn't much of a meal. I'll make you something better tomorrow. Oh, no, Martha. You can't keep giving up your dinner hour. Anyway, there's no need. I'll be back on my feet tomorrow. No, oh, we'll see. Everyone's been so kind. Susan Orobin was round this morning. Oh, and... was she now? Well, I should think so, too, if it wasn't for her pig... Oh, it's not her fault. She's got daft brothers. She could try keeping them in order. Oh, come on, Martha. Susan against the five of them. <laughs> She's really out of place in that lot. Yes, that little trace is no better. I think the gypsies must have stolen the real Orobin and left Susan instead. <laughs> gypsies would have more sense. <laughs> Maybe there was a mix-up at Borchester Maternity, then. She doesn't even look like the rest of them. That's a bit fanciful for you, Neil. Lying here with nothing to do but stare at the ceiling, I get all sorts of daft notions. About Susan Orobin? No, most of them about Julie, actually. Well, they are daft, then. That's all over and done with, and good riddance. I thought you liked her. Neil, I didn't say anything at the time because it would have only made trouble. And I'm not saying it hasn't happened before because it has. But the way you two was living here together... Well, like you said, it's all over now, so there's really no point in I talking... I knew it any... wouldn't make you happy. It's just not right for you, Neil. You're not that kind of a boy. <laughs> oh, Martha. You're as good as a tonic. You really are. Oh, shut up, you stupid things. I've only come to help you. Hello? Anybody in there? It's only me, Susan. Oh, hello, Mr. Forrest. Oh, hello, Susan. I didn't expect to find you here. I thought you were Mike Tucker. I tried to find him to explain what I was doing, but there's no one about. Oh, no, I know. I reckon they're all out harvesting, taking advantage of the weather. What are you doing here, anyway? Mm, that's a good question. I promised Neil I'd have a look to see that his ends were all right. Thing is, I don't really know much about ends. 
<laughs> Not when they're jammed together like this, anyway. Oh, they weren't that strange. Great minds think alike, eh? Oh, you mean that's why you've come too? Well, I heard Eddie Grundy was supposed to be looking after him, and I wouldn't trust him to mind a jam jar of tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's fed them, I think. But they haven't collected the eggs. No, not all of them, any road. Nice of you to want to help, Neil. Oh, well. I feel as if it was all my fault. It was my pig he was chasing. Now, I don't want to speak out of turn, Susan. But if you're going to hold yourself responsible for all the silly capers your brothers gets up to, you're going to be old before your time. Oh, they don't mean no harm, really. They just never think. Uh, maybe so. Not like Neil. He's very responsible, isn't he? Oh, yes. Tends to worry too much, if anything. So let's give him one less thing to worry about, shall we? Now, it shouldn't take us both long to see to these eggs. Oh, thanks, Mr Forrest. If you could just show me once, then I'd know what to do in future. Who's there? M Mr. Woolley? Who is it? Don't worry, Caroline. It's only me. I couldn't sleep. I got up to make myself a drink and then I saw the light in the bar. It's all right. <laughs> I'm not drowning my sorrows. No one would blame you if you were. It doesn't seem to work. I never felt more sober in my life. Do you want to be left alone? No. Stay with me a bit if you can bear to. Of course I can. I wish there was more I could do. You won't mind if I talk about Valerie? Talk away. I'm really very interested. It's just that, well, she's filling my mind at the moment. I can't think about anything else. No, of course not. I feel as if I might see her at any moment, if I turn my head quick enough. It was in this bar I first met her. Oh, I didn't realise. Years ago, of course. When I was new to the district, she was sitting here with... <laughs> That's a funny thing. Can't remember who she was with. And yet, they must have introduced us. Memories work like that. Very patchy. But I can see her very clearly, wearing a flame-coloured dress. She was sitting here laughing. Oh, she had a lovely laugh. Very rich, very full. Not unfeminine or anything, mind. No, of course not. And I thought, what a beautiful woman. And how full of energy and... and life. Yes, I've heard she was very beautiful. Of course. <laughs> I was never a match for her. Dull old stick like me. <laughs> I was surprised she stuck it as long as she did. Don't say that when you loved her so much. Oh, yes. I loved her. But she'd had a very exciting life in the war, you know, and, and then married to Reggie. He died when they were in the West Indies. Oh? Well, I knew I could never compete. I thought she wanted to settle down. Perhaps it would have been better for her if she had. That's what I keep thinking. If only I tried harder, perhaps it might have all been different. Oh, Mr Woolley, I didn't mean that. You mustn't blame yourself. But I do. I do. Oh, but why? What more could you have done? <sighs> if I could have kept her with me... Well, I, I don't think I'd have driven her to drink. Oh, is that what... Killed her? Mm. Well, obviously Hazel's trying to spare my feelings, but I can read between the lines. Oh, you mustn't blame her. Oh, I'm not really in a position to... It wasn't that she was weak. Just she expected so much from life. Because she had so much to offer. She couldn't bear to be disappointed. Mr. Woolley, from what everyone says, I... well, I'm sure you did everything you could. Hmm. Wasn't quite good enough, though, was it, Caroline? She was so full of life, sitting here, laughing. And I let her go. And now I can't have her back. Not ever. <laughs> 